Hello, welcome back. This is video number three in a series of four videos uh, discussing the equation of a tangent plane. Um, the links will be down below for the other videos. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. So in the previous two videos, we discussed the concept of how to find the equation of a tangent plane when z is defined explicitly as a function of x and y. And then in the second video, we looked at uh, some calculations where you get a choice of deciding um, whether you want to um, find the equation of the tangent plane using a sort of slope intercept form or a point slope form. We did one example of each. Now we want to study the question, what if the function is defined implicitly as a function of x and y? What that means is that the x and y in the equation are all, and the z, sorry, are all mixed in together. So, so there's no way to algebraically isolate z and have it z equal to a function of x and y. But you can still study the function. You can still be able to measure the, um, the change in the function. And you can um, still find the equation of the tangent plane. And so here's an example of such a function. We have x squared y plus 4xz cubed equals to yz. And so this, this um, implicitly defined function z is a function of x and y. We're inter we'll be interested in finding the equation of the tangent plane at a particular point. And so we want to figure out then, well, what will be the, um, what's the normal vector to it? What, what is the, um, the a, b, and c in the equation, the coefficients on x, y, and z in the equation of the tangent plane? And we're going to find out that it's much like what we had before when z was defined explicitly. Um, it involves partial derivatives. So the next slide is a derivation slide. Please follow if you can. And then after that, we'll do an example. We're going to talk about the concept of how we come about the fact that partial derivatives are involved in finding the equation of the tangent plane. All right, great. So in that function or any, any function like that, um, it's the, it's the graph of it is representative of a surface. And what we want to do to, to um, be able to um, deal with it in, um, and analyze the, the equation of the tangent plane, we want to set it equal to a constant. It doesn't have to be set equal to zero. If there's constants in the, in the equation, we can um, move everything over to one side and leave the constant on the other side. And so um, this then represents a four-dimensional shape and uh, a level, actually a level curve for a four-dimensional um, surface. But anyway, here's what happens. So we have this uh, three-dimensional surface, well actually um, the level curve of a four-dimensional surface is in 3D and um, it's the blue. And what we're going to do is try to find the equation of what's in orange there is a, a rectangular looking shape, but it's a tangent plane. Um, we'll be interested in a particular point P and so uh, that point P will be our point of tangency and what's going to happen is we call that point x not y not z not and what we're going to find out is that the gradient vector is the normal vector let's try to figure out why that's the case so um, what we're going to do is uh, have a curve c be any curve that lies on the surface but also passes through the same point p i just have it marked off here the key is that it's on the surface and it passes through P. All right, great. Um, as we saw back in uh, earlier chapter, we want to be able to parameterize curves. And so um, that's what we're going to do here. We're going to take um, X, Y, and Z, represent them as functions of T, and discuss how we can travel along that curve with this parameterization, this position function, R of T. So any point that's on the curve is also on the surface. And so what we can do then is uh, discuss the, interac the interaction between the two by replacing all the x's with the function x of t, all the y's with the function y of t, all the z's with the function z of t. And then we could actually consider then this capital F function being a single variable function of t. And then we could take its derivative. Using what? the chain rule. All right, great, let's check it out. So f um, is a function of t, and we wanna use the chain rule where we take partial derivatives. Partial derivative of f with respect to x gets multiplied by dx dt, 
partial derivative of f with respect to y gets multiplied by dy dt, partial derivative of f with respect to z gets multiplied by dz dt. The other side is a constant. Its derivative with respect to t is a zero. Uh, this is, you know, we need the function to be differentiable. We need the fun function capital F to be differentiable at our point that we're interested in. But if all that's the case, then we could, yes, we could set up this equation here just using a chain rule. Now, this is going to be the, the partial of f with respect to t and the fact that it's equal to zero. Now look closely at that. It, look, it should look familiar. And we're going to view it in the following way. What we're going to do is write it like a dot product. We have uh, the partials multiplied by the associated d dt, dx dt, dy dt, dz dt. And so we're going to write it as a vector for the, the partial derivative vector. That's the gradient vector. And that's going to be dotted with dx dt, dy dt, and dz dt. You know how dot products work. And now if it's equal to zero, what does that mean when a dot product is equal to zero? It means that the vectors are orthogonal. Um, in the picture here, we have the vector r prime of t naught, and we have the gradient vector at x naught, y naught, z naught. And these two guys are orthogonal to each other, according to the way we set this up, because their dot product is equal to zero. All right, great. Now, the, um, the r prime of t naught is the derivative vector, the velocity vector for the, the curve C. And so T naught is the uh, going to be the time that we are at the point P, um, X naught, Y naught, Z naught. So R of T naught is, e, the vector R of T naught is equal to X naught, Y naught, Z naught. R prime of T naught is the X prime of T naught and Y prime of T naught and Z prime of T naught. The tangent vector, it's a tangent vector to the curve but it lies in the tangent plane. R prime of t naught lies in the tangent plane. And so, if the gradient vector is orthogonal to this vector, and that vector lies in the tangent plane, then the gradient vector is the normal vector to the tangent plane. Now, why do we care about that? Well, the a, b, and c that fall into the equation of the tangent plane as the coefficients on x, y, and z, now we know how to find them. And we're going to have the two different viewpoints again. We're going to have the um, point slope look at it, and we'll have the slope intercept look at it. And let's take a look at that on the next slide. All right, so anytime you have an equation of a plane, and uh, with this normal vector and a point that, that is in the plane, then you can put them into the formula, the point slope kind of formula, where you multiply by a, a by the quantity of x minus x naught, b times the quantity of y minus y naught, and c times the quantity z minus z naught, and that'll be set equal to zero. Okay, but when it's the tangent plane, we now know the values of a, b, and c. They are gonna be the partial derivatives of capital F not the, um, the original function, we have to set the original function equal to a constant. So capital F evaluated um, at the um, x naught, y naught, z naught, um, the partials there end up being a, b, and c, respectively. And so that's it. You can use this as your equation of the tangent plane when your function is defined implicitly as a function of x and y, your function z is. Okay, and this is your point slope kind of a feel to it. All right, but if you don't like that and you prefer like a slope intercept kind of a feel where you'll have a bunch of variables, you'll plug them in, and you'll find the one missing variable, then this is for you. Um, and so um, we have the equation ax plus by plus cz plus d equals zero. And we have six of those seven guys. We have ABC, we have X naught, Y naught, Z naught. They're gonna take the place of X, Y, and Z. And the only thing left over is to find out what D is. So this is like our slope intercept form. Plug in A, B, and C. These are numbers. They're partial derivatives, but evaluated at the point of tangency. 
the point of tangency get plugged in for X, Y, and Z. Those are six guys. Go find a seventh guy. So you choose which one you like. Either one is fine. They both work. Um, I don't want to steer you one way or the other, so your own personal choice. Um, we'll do one example this time, and I will do it in the second approach by doing it in the slope intercept form. Okay, great. So here it is. That same guy we had before, x squared y plus 4z cubed minus yz. I'm sorry, equals yz, and then we'll minus yz over. Okay, find an equation for this tangent plane. Uh, we're interested in, in the point um, when x is 1 and y is 2, it turns out then that z is negative 1. You can double check that if you want. All right, so we have our capital F function where that guy is set equal to 0 or a constant, and it's our job to take the partials. What is the partial with respect to x? So we take 2xy. That's it. There's only one x there. And all the rest of them are constant with respect to x. So they, the other terms there, so they don't contribute to the derivative at all. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Uh, sorry about that. There was a typo when I originally wrote, um, typed up the, the uh, equation. There should have been an x in there. On the second term, it should have been 4xz cubed. Sorry about that. But we're good now, and we take the x partial to get uh, 2xy plus 4z cubed. We take the y partial and get x squared minus z. And we take the z partial and get 12xz squared minus y. What are we doing to do these partials? We're holding the other variables constant. We treat them like a constant. We zone in on the variable that we're taking the derivative with respect to, treat everything else like a constant, and we do whatever uh, we need to do to take the derivative of that term. Z cubed's derivative is 3z squared. That 4 and that x get treated the same way. 4 and x get carried down like constants do. The 3 comes down from the power rule, and that's how we get the 12x, and then take away 1 from the exponent. That's how we get z squared. So partial derivatives, you hold the other variables constant. Focus on the variable that you're taking the derivative with respect to and uh, keep just carry everything else down. Okay, great. So these are our partials. These make up the gradient vector. And we are interested in the particular point when x is 1 and y is 2 and z is negative 1. So let's plug them in. What happens when... We plug in a 1, 2, and a negative 1 into the partial with respect to x. We end up with a 4 for the first part, but then a minus 4 for the second part. So it zeroes out. What do we get for the partial with respect to y evaluated at the point 1, 2, negative 1? There's no y's in it at all. We just square the 1 and subtract the negative 1. They double up and you get 2. What do we get when we plug in 1, 2, negative 1 into the z partial? x times z squared is just a 1, so that's a 12. And then we um, take away 2. So we get 10. What are these numbers? These are the variables a, b, and c. They represent the normal vector to the tangent plane at that point. Now we have the, uh, the point of tangencies, x not y not z not. That's six of our variables. You see, there's this equation that we know for sure is the equation of the tangent plane. It's ax plus by plus cz plus d equals zero. We have abc. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to take the x not y not z not and plug them in. That'll give us six of the seven, and we just have to figure out what d is. So abc, x not y not z not, multiply, 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 add and add, and what comes out? will be the opposite of d because that, that plus d is equal to zero. Um, it turns out here we get a four minus a 10 plus the d is equal to zero, so d must be six because you have a negative six there that you move over to the other side. So then what do you do with this thing? Well, you put it back into the equation. Now that you have what d is, you don't have to put zero x. You just put two y plus 10 z plus the six equals zero. This is the equation of the tangent plane but something shouldn't set right in your soul. It's like having a, a fraction that's not reduced. And so if you see that the coefficients have something in common, factor that out. Kind of get it in lowest terms. And so they all are even numbers. So we take out a 2. 
it's, you know, it's just a different form of the same equation. It's twice the equation, but it's still going to be true that this guy here, y plus 5z plus 3, is the equation of the tangent plane to that function at that point. Even though the function was defined, function z is defined implicitly as a function of x and y. All the x and y's mixed in so much that you couldn't untangle and get z by itself. And so that's what it means to be implicit. And this is how you handle it with the a, b, and c being the, the um, gradient vector evaluated at the um, point of tangency. Okay, great. So um, this, this brings this video to an end. There's one more video to come. We look at applications of the tangent plane, and um, that will end the series. And so thank you for, so much for, um, for watching. Um, like and subscribe. Comment down below. Um, take care.